Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 162 of Build Your Stash and Craft. Today um, I picked up these little, they were called counting chips, um, from the Dollar Tree in the kids section. You can also find them in places they, you know, like bingo chips or whatever, but they're just little clear plastic chips. And I got them because I wanted to try and make my own typewriter keys and so that's what that was my first thought with them but my other thought then was we could use them for so many different things also that if you didn't want to use them for typewriter keys there are a lot of other things that you could do with them so I'm going to show you let me take a few out so that we can have them out to play with I'm going to show you some of the things that we can make with these and then we'll just kind of like make one of each real quick so um, these are some of the things that I've done with it. So to start with, this one, I just went ahead and painted it. My light's not very good. I drilled a hole in the top, and then I painted it half purple and half black. And the only reason that it's half purple and half black is because I really wanted it to be purple, and um, that's the color I painted it. And when I went to put the second coat on, I accidentally grabbed out the black. So. I started to paint it and went, uh-oh. So it's half black and half purple. But I thought that actually turned out cuter than just if it was all purple. And then you can glue something on here. You can leave it just like it is. You can use it for a necklace or earrings. Or really, what I'm thinking of is like charms and books and on different dangles that you make in that type of thing. So you can paint one side. You can paint both sides. This one, I only painted one side. But um, you can do it however you'd like. And I paint them with nail polish. You can drill holes in them with the Dremel that we bought. And on this one, I drilled a hole at the top. And then I drilled three holes at the bottom so that you could hang this up and then like hang three charms off of the bottom and and let them dangle down. So I thought that that, that was another nice little way to use it. And... This is just framed with nothing on it. This is the this is the look I wanted for the typewriter keys. And even though it doesn't really look like typewriter keys, it gives me that feeling. So, um, you know, it's just kind of, they're kind of old. And the first coat of um, nail polish that you put on it kind of goes matte after it dries. And so, um, so I put a circle of black and then a little bit of gold around the outside of that. And then I just glued it to a letter that I printed off of my computer. And I just think that, to me, it reminds me of old the old, old typewriter keys. And so that's that was my first thought for it. But you can also stamp on them with stays on. And what's kind of neat is when you stamp on them, and the stamp is on this side. When you turn it over, you've got the depth of of the chip. And that just kind of makes it look really neat because it, it kind of pushes that back a little bit. And it just looks, that just looks kind of fun. And then you can glue it here. I glued it on some music paper. You can glue it on pictures. Um, you know, you can glue it on anything that you would like to. You can draw something or write something that you want and glue it on there. And then you can literally just take it and glue it on a page that you're working on in a journal or something. And I glue them together with clear fingernail polish. I just put clear fingernail polish on the back, put it where I want it, give it a good press, and then let it dry well. And so there's lots of things, like I said, I really wanted to do the typewriter keys, but there's lots of things that you can do with these. They're just fun to play with. So I'm gonna set it aside and just show you how to do these real quick. So the first thing, like I said, I really wanted to do typewriter keys. So to do the typewriter keys, I just went ahead and I just used black nail polish. Now, you know, honestly, you know, we know that typewriter keys were not blue or red or yellow. They were usually a black background with a white letter. Um, but because I really can't do a black background with a white letter, I am going to, and all I'm doing is I'm going around the edge of the chip and you can do it like this, um, or you can pick it up and do it, but and you can make it be very, very straight. Well, if your hands don't shake, <laughs> my hands shake, so I'm not going to get it super straight. But you can make it really straight, or you can, I really like the way that mine have turned out, where they're very kind of um, 
bumpy. Now I've gone part way around. I'm going to move it so that I can do the rest. i find my toothpick here. Before I wind up getting a whole bunch of black on the back. Although if I get black on the back side, that does not bother me. And you can kind of scrape it off also. So I'm just going to move this out here. I did get a little bit of black right there. And then you can also just use your toothpick to, to hold it down also. And then just continue around until you get to the other side. And then you just need to let it set aside and dry. And like I said, after it dries, it's going to have kind of a matte finish to it. So if you want it to be a shiny finish, you'll need to do a second coat. And so then once you get that all done, you set it aside and you let it dry. And then it comes out looking like this. And you could use it just like that. And again, put it on anything that you want to. I'm going to set this one aside. But then what I like to do, and I don't really know, because my keys were held in with silver, and I, I do have silver here, um, and I did put silver on one, but I really like the gold better, because around the edge they had that ring of metal that, that held them all together. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of gold on the edge, like this. And this I'm just kind of, oops, excuse me, I'm not making sure that I make it straight. I'm just kind of putting it on there so it's a little bit almost like bumpy or wavy or something like that. Just kind of going like that. And that's for two reasons. I like the way it looks. And number two, um, you know, if your hands are just a little bit shaky sometimes, then it's just frustrating to try and make it perfect. And if these are like the old typewriter keys that are 100 years old or whatever, they're not going to still be in perfect shape, even if they were in pretty perfect shape when they were made. So, but I really like the looks of that bumpiness. So now that I've got it almost down, I'm going to set it down just to do the last little bit. Or you can set it down and let it dry and then go back and pick it up and do the last little bit. But I'm just doing like that over here. I don't like how thin it is. So I'm going to just put a little bit of bumpiness over here and here because I want to see the gold on top and so there we go so now we have this black one that's got and then we have the black with the gold around the edge and then you're going to just let that dry once that's dry you're just going to take your clear fingernail polish and I printed out some letters on my computer. If you don't have a computer or not a com well, I put them on my computer, printed them on my printer. And if you don't have a printer to print them on, you can just use letters out of books, pictures out of books. You can write your own letter. Just make a letter, write it down on paper, and then um, go ahead and do it that way. I made um, just a whole sheet of letters and what I use, just so that you know if you want to kind of the layout for it is, I use 22 point type and um and then eight spaces between each of the letters that gave me enough space so that i could glue each one down because i want to cut around them so i didn't want them too close together where i'd wind up with a square of a letter i wanted enough room to be able to to get each of these there with my letter right in the center and so once you've gone ahead and you've got your black and you've got your gold then all you're going to do is just Take your clear fingernail polish. Here, we'll cut these off of here first because they should be about dry. I'm going to cut really close to my B so that I don't lose paper I might need for the C. There we go. Make sure you don't just kind of go over here and cut up there because then it might not cover. It might not fill in underneath your, your little chip here. And then I'm just going to take some clear fingernail polish and I'm just gonna paint it on here. Make sure that you get the whole thing covered, but it does not need to be thick because whatever extra thickness you have on there is just gonna squash out the sides and make it a little harder to cut. 
and then just put it right on where you need it. Make sure that you get it centered or exactly where you want it and give it a good press. And then there we go. Now there's our letter C. And then just set them aside to dry. They don't take a real, real long time to dry. And then once they're dry, you just use your scissors and just cut around them. And it's just that simple. And so I did, I wanted to do ABC and I did them in the three colors. Um, and, but you could also use them to, um, spell words, you know, go ahead and just write out a word. And like I said, the 22 point font does wind up being a nice size to fit on here. And then you'll need eight spaces between your letters. If you want to do one letter, um, to a, to one of the little chips. Just leave about eight spaces between them so that you have enough room to have your paper cover completely underneath the chip. And so there we go. And this one, this one has silver around the edges and then this one has the gold around the edges. And I really like the way that they look. So that was my thought for them and that's what I really want to use them for. But um, to drill a hole in them, all you need to do, okay, so, let me just get, oh, I need to shut this up. This is not mine. This is my husband's. This is just some heavy cardboard here that I put onto my, um, my cutting board so that I have something to drill into. And then all you need to do is just take one of your chips, take your Dremel with the smallest um, drill bit. There was two sizes in the one we got. And um, so just use the smallest one. And then just straight up and down. And that's all there is to it. Now we have a hole right in our chip. And so that works out perfectly. And they don't, they don't, I was afraid that maybe they might crack or something, but they don't. The only thing is, is that your, um, your drill bit gets hot. And so it kind of melts the plastic as it, as it drills the hole. So you either want to make sure that you get that picked off right away because it's hard plastic. And if it doesn't, um, then just take your, a little pair of pliers and just kind of give it a squeeze right on the plastic not on the drill bit just give it a little squeeze and that just kind of breaks that plastic and then you can just get it off of there so because you don't want to leave that on there for your next project or if you're doing if you're doing more than one do that every time or otherwise it just gets too thick and too heavy so and so that's how you can just make yourself little charms out of them like I said, you can drill a hole in the top and do what you want. You can drill a hole in the top and then drill some holes in the bottom and have little places to, to hang little charms. You could drill a hole on each side in a bunch of them and string them together and let them hang down. So that's how you can make those. And then obviously, um, you know, for pictures or anything like that, it's a matter of just choosing where you want it. Like let's say we want that right there, or maybe we want these notes over here. Just decide where you want it. Use your clear fingernail polish. And then just glue it down. And again, don't make it too thick. Let's go here. And once you set it down, then give it a good push. That makes everything nice and flat, makes really good contact, and does put it, push out any excess um, nail polish that you might have on there. 
and then that's what that's going to look like. Now you can you can paint the edges after you do this. You could paint the edges before you do this. You can do that however you would like. And then they're easy to stamp on. You can just take the only thing is when you're stamping, be careful. Um, you're going to want to use because they're a non-pore service. You're going to want to use um, stays on or uh, alcohol permanent ink. And I just have one of our little flowers here from the, what were they? They start with an H. I don't remember. From the stamp set that we got. And then just stamp it. Now the one thing I was saying is that you have to be careful about that it's a little bit slippery. So when you press it down, don't let it move. Make sure that you keep it in the same spot because it's going to want to slide. If it slides and you make a mess, just use a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a tissue, wipe it off, and start over again. And there we go. Now these have to dry for a while, but there we have a cute little stamped flower. And I think, pretty much, that is all the different things. Let's stamp this off a little bit. I think that's pretty much all the different things that I did with it. You can... Um, I'm sure that you can think of a lot of ideas yourself, but I just think that they are really fun. I, I really do like the, the little typewriter letters because I've always wanted these, but they're quite expensive and they're not necessarily that easy to find unless you like look for them online. And, um, and like I said, I just didn't want to pay that much money for them. And here's one that I stamped and then I drilled right through the center of the flower. So, um, yeah, they're just fun. They're, they're very fun to play with and they're easy to make. So I hope that if you make some of these that you have a good time with them. I know that I've been having fun playing with them and trying to figure out the different ideas. And for next week, we are going to need these 10-piece binder clips from the Dollar Tree. They say that they are 32 millimeters. Um, that's about an inch across. And you're going to want this size or the larger size. You don't want the ones that are smaller than this. So let's get the large. I think this is kind of like a medium size. And then I think there's a really big honking one that you can get too. And those would be fine. But you need at least this size, an inch across or bigger. So, and that's... 32 millimeters, let's say, because that might be just a little over an inch. So this is what we'll need for next week. So we're going to spend a dollar next week. And then we'll just need some chipboard, some of our papers, glue. And so that's what we'll need. So we're going to put $4 in our bank. Let's see, we have $33 right now. I think I said $30 last week because that's where we were last week when we started. Um, and then we added $3.00. Um, because we only spent two last week. So we are now at $33. We're going to add another $4 to that since we only have to spend a dollar. And so then we are going to have $37 in our bank. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoy these. I know I'm going to have fun playing with the little typewriter ones. I like them the best with the yellow. I think that that looks, the, the yellow looks the best for the typewriter keys. But um, it's fun to have them in all the different colors. So thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.